Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to MDGO Traders. My name is Taren, and let's talk about Orzov tokens and Guilds of Ravnica Standard. So if you guys saw, I guess on Fan Friday about two weeks ago now, uh, we had Sir Elks actually showing us a deck called Transmogrifying Wand, and it was an Orzov deck that kind of took advantage of the Transmogrifying Wand and Divine Intervention, and using that as a way to kind of create a lot of 4-4 Flying Vigilance Angels. And so I really liked the idea of the deck. Went back, did some tinkering on it, did some brewing, seeing if I can make it a little bit more competitive for us. And then this is it. This is Orzov Tokens. So let's jump right into the deck tech. So here we are with the deck tech, guys. We've got Hunted Witness as our complete four of on our one drop slot, a one mana, one one human. Whenever it dies, create a one one white soldier creature token with lifelink. So you're going to see here all of the creatures here have a way for us to kind of like, if they die, they come back as a token or they're just kind of hard to deal with like a Danto Vanguard, which is our next creature to talk about. But before I kind of get into that, I um, want to say that tokens right now, really good. This is really like straight up pure value for us uh, because a lot of the decks right now that are kind of running, you know, Assassin's Trophy, Shocks, Lightning Strikes, Fiery Cannonade, um, you know, uh, Ritual of Soot, those kind of things, they can't really handle a board wipe and then just having flipped tokens, even if they're one ones, they really can't handle that for some reason. And it makes this deck a lot better than it should be, which is kind of amazing. Uh, let's move on here. We've got a Danto Vanguard, a two mana, one one. As long as it's attacking, it gets plus two, plus zero. And of course you can pay for life and make it indestructible. One of the best things about this is if, if we use Transmogrifying Wand on the Vanguard, pay for life, make it indestructible, it doesn't die. And we still get a four, four uh, flying vigilance uh, angel if we have divine intervention on the battlefield or just a two, four ox if we need that. Too. Next, of course, we've got Doom to Center, a 2 mana 1 1. Whenever it dies, it creates a 2 2 black zombie creature token. A great card for a turn 2 play for us if we don't have the Adanto Vanguard, but overall fantastic. Even if we don't get the, the Angel, we still get a 2 2 from a 1 1, which is not bad either. Next, we've got Death Bloom Thalad, a 3 mana 3 2, and when it dies, you get a 1 1 green sapling creature token. So, again, a lot of creature tokens coming into play for us with the Divine Intervention but also just kind of de-incentivizing all the removal that's kind of coming towards these creatures, which means opponents really don't want to spend a removal spell on the Death Boom Thalad, a Thalad unless it's like a Vrasis Contempt or a Exile spell or something like that. Uh, moving up here, we've got two Vrasis Contempt in the main board here, a four mana instant Exile target creature or Planeswalker. You gain two life. Very good against the Control matchup, very good against the Rekindling Phoenix matchup, which is often in the format right now, and uh, just a very great card overall as a great removal spell for us. Next up, we've got Transmogrifying want a three minute artifact when it enters the battlefield put three charge counters on it you can pay one remove a charge counter destroy target creature its controller creates a two for a white ox creature token activates this ability only anytime you could cast a sorcery so this is great for us and mostly we're going to use this on our own creatures at sorcery speed um you can use this on your opponent's creatures if they have like a huge threat like say a rekindling phoenix or let's say they have like a, a giant like Thief of Sanity or a Doom Whisperer. If you want to just downgrade those to something that's not as threatening, threatening, you can definitely use Transmogrifying One and buy yourself some time. Next up, let's go to enchantments here. We've got Legion's Landing, a complete four of a uh, one mana and legendary enchantment. When there's a battlefield, you get a one one life linker. And when you attack out with three creatures, it turns into a land and can be a great card for you to get, a, and again, a lot of tokens on the battlefield. Next up, we've got History Banalia, a great token producer, a three mana legend, or not legendary, three mana enchantment saga. It's a saga, not legendary. Chapter 1 and 2 create a 2-2 two, two, uh, white knight creature token with vigilance. And chapter 3, knights you control get plus 2, plus 1. Back to back, history banalities like one after the other is usually pretty back breaking, breaking for an opponent if they don't have enchantment hate or removal for the board state, like a ritual of soot or something. So very good card can kind of win the game by itself sometimes if left unchecked. Um, but again, very good at being able to kind of create those 4-4 flyers for us thanks to cards like Divine Visitation. Next up, we've got Conclave Tribunal. Uh, since we have lots of cards in here that are creatures that create tokens, we have ways to kind of pay for this to be a little bit cheaper. A four mana enchantment with Convoke. Um, it is a battlefield, exile target, non land, permanent, and opponent controls until Conclave Tribunal leaves the battlefield. You could just put two more Vrasis Contempts in here, uh, but I like this being able to hit an enchantment, uh, search for Ascanta, those kind of things like that, uh, or any other kind of planeswalker that, like, if they're up in like a Is It Spells or something like that, and Conclave hits, more often than not, it's going to stay on the field the rest of the match for us, which is nice. And the last four in the decklist besides lands is Divine Visitation. A five minute enchantment. If one or more tokens would be created under your control, create that many four four white angel creature tokens with flying and vigilance instead, which is ugh, just perfect for you for this strategy. A fantastic card to get off. One of the things is the deck is very good without Divine Visitation, but with Divine Visitation, it's basically an auto skew from the opponent. So that's kind of why this card is in here, just being fantastically powerful with everything else in the deck list. Let's go on to lands really quickly. We've got nine swamp, 10 planes, 
two Moral to Glory. This card is in the deck list, of course, because it comes in tap, which is not great, but it taps for white mana, which is nice, and you can pay four and get two 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens. So if they wi uh, wipe your board state of all your tokens and you have Divine Visitation, you can create two 4-4s four with Vigilance and Flying with Memorial to Glory. Just very good at being able to kind of come back from a like a giant sweeper or a Settle of the Wreckage or something like that. Just a very good card to kind of build onto your board state as well. And lastly, we've got a Isolated Chapel. Now, the one thing that's kind of the downside in this deck list is we have Forsaken Sanctuary in standard right now, which is another kind of black and white uh, land that comes in tapped, but it comes in tapped and that's not great. So I would rather have the shock land being able to come in, you know, giving you the option to be able to shock yourself and, uh, you know, coming in tapped if we don't want to shock ourselves. But that's probably going to come in in the next Ravnica set. So just kind of waiting out for that. But right now, the man is a little rough in this deck list because of that. But let's move on to our sideboard real quick. We've got three duress here because we got to deal with control, you know, Look in their hand, choose a non-creature, non-land card. Basically a removal spell or a counter spell to get rid of it. Or, you know, a planeswalker as well. Also have Sentinel Totem against the Golgari mid-range matchups. Also anything with Jumpstart, like the Is It Drake's deck. That deck is insane right now. Sentinel Totem can deal with those Phoenixes coming back from the graveyard. We also have cards like Dekali Honor Guard against the um, Golgari mid-range match with the um, Chupacabra, the Golgari Fine Broker, those kind of cards. As well as, if you want to bring this in for the Mono Red matchup against a Goblin Chain Whirler, things like that. Just a very good card overall. Also have Invoke the Divine here against the more kind of mid-rangey stuff with uh, like uh, enchantments like, um, you know, the Conclave Tribunal of another opponent's deck, a History of Vanalia of another Green White or Abzan Knight's deck. Very good card. And it gains you four life as well, which is very nice too. Next up, we've got Ritual of Soot, a four mana sorcery. Destroy all creatures with converted mana cost three or less. This is actually kind of to our advantage. It might even be good enough to put into the main ward, but I put Brass's Contempt in its place instead. I really like Ritual of Soot here because, again, if you have lots of creatures on the field that, you know, become tokens. If we have Divine Visitation, they all turn into 4-4 four, four Flyers, which you can't even really ask for much better than that. I uh, love Ritual Set for that kind of situation. And we have two more Settle the Wreckage in here, which is very good against the, uh, you know, the more mono green Stompy decks, the Golgari Stompy decks. Carnage Turn is in the format. We got to deal with it. Settle the Wreckage is a way to do that. And Vras's Contempt, two more in the sideboard as well, uh, which is going to kind of help there as well. Um, and if you want to build this on MPGO Traders, it's coming to about 92 tickets, which is not bad. That's because Vras's Contempt has kind of come down in price a little bit. Uh, but if you want to build this in paper, it's coming to about 271 bucks, which is a little bit more expensive uh, than normal as far as a deck I want to kind of build for like a more of a budget kind of brew. This is not really a budget brew. This is more like a, just a kind of a, a brew in standard. So pretty good deck for that. Uh, but let's get into some matches and see how this deck performs. And I'll get you right back after that. All right, guys, let's get into match one here with Orzov tokens, divine intervention. Please cast your light upon me. <laughs> uh, I have a decent opening hand with three lands, a witness, a thalid, and a wand with a conclave tribunal. So this is definitely a key for me, going for the hunted witness pass into the opponent. Black mana, bam, but I am. Going for a planes here, getting in for one mana, or one point of damage, down to 19. Looks like it might be up against demir control of some sort. Will we see body erasure? We do. I think they're probably gonna take the visitation, maybe the thalid for the turn three damage. Could be that. Yep, taking the thalid there. Gonna go for a land and hit for the Hunted Witness and go for Transmogrifying Wand here. Now, one of the things is, even if we don't get Divine Visitation out, we can go Wand on the Hunted Witness, making him a 1-1 one, one, and a 2-4. Body Erasure once again from the opponent. This is definitely Demir Control. Ugh, so stressful. Uh, I assume they're gonna take the Conclave Tribunal since we have that for four mana next turn. Yep, that's what they're gonna take. Divine Visitation still needs five mana, so they think that they'll probably be able to get that, get rid of that before we get it out. History of Benalia top deck into a one point of damage, so. The downside, of course, to doing Thought Erasure is they can't really get our top decks with the, with the counter there. Opt from the opponent there. Three mana into... Is it Disinformation? It is Disinformation Campaign. Discard Divine Intervention. We're going to go Legion's Landing. Play that out and just get in for three here. Slowly pinging away at our opponent. If they have a Ritual of Soot here, I'm going to feel real bad. Uh, but we will be able to make a 1-1 one, one after that. Demir Spybug into a Sprite here. Nice. Now we're just going to go for an all-out attack and flip that Legion's Landing. Valid in the top of our deck here, off the top. Down to two, playing out the Thalid. And now Ritual Soot won't be able to handle it. There we go. Let's go for the uh, game two. We're bringing in the Duress, taking out the Transmogrifying Wand. And uh, could bring in maybe Contempt, but I think we're just going to hit Submit here. Actually, we're going to take out the Visitation, bring in Contempt, and uh, maybe sell the Wreckage. Let's do, let's do, actually, you know, Ritual Soot. We'll do Ritual Soot. Ritual Soot's a little bit better because we have the, uh, the tokens flipping after getting rid of their Surveilling Creatures. I'm just assuming we're going to see Doom Whisper. So we're taking out our heavier hitters and bringing in low to the ground stuff. Opening hands, pretty fantastic for us. They have a tap land, so no duress for us. Legion's Landing play, get a 1-1. One, one. 
Hoping for that history finale to hit the battlefield. Let's see here. Do we see a thought erasure? We don't pass the turn. Go for uh, Adanto Vanguard. Now we just gotta get around Nessun Scatter. We get it. Getting in for one point of damage here. Lifelink. Not from the opponent here. Would very much like to hold on to our history finale if we can. <laughs> Five cards in hand for the opponent. Three mana. Going for a Plague Crafter. Now, thanks to the 1-1 uh, one, one Lifelinker, we're just going to sack that and make it a Danto Vanguard. Stay on the field. Go for History Banalia. And then just get in for three points of damage. Best moves we can do here. Going for an Opton. Main Phase 2. They're in trouble. Hit their uh, fourth land drop, though. Four cards in hand. Do we see another Thought Erasure? We do. Getting rid of a... Uh, maybe a Thalid here? Doom Dissenter is the pick for the opponent. That's a very strange pick for me. I feel like the Thalid would be more of a threat, but, you know, whatevs. Gonna go for a Thalid into a Hunted Witness and just get in for five. Drop them down to 11. And, of course, if they go for a Ritual of a Soot, we just, we just just continue to attack in here with uh, lots of damage. Four cards in hand for the opponent. What do they have? Maybe a Rassus Contempt for the Adanto Vanguard? No, they have Night Vale Predator. Chapter 3 for History Banalia is actually going to end the game for us, so very nice there. Let's just uh, get in for everybody. They can kill a 4-3, uh, but they're still going to be taking 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 points of damage, which that's going to close out the match. Nice. Let's get into match 2 here and see what we can do. 3 lands for us, 2 Tribunals, and a Thalid. This is an alright hand. We really keep it for the uh, the white mana there for History Banalia if we had a turn 3. Divine Visitation off the top is not good. Opponent looks like they're maybe on Demir again. Oh no, they're on Esper. Okay, we're going to go for a Transmogrifying one first to see if it gets countered. Sinister Sabotage does get countered. Five cards in hand, going for an Isolated Chapel. Gonna go for our Thalid here. It does hit, which is very nice for us. Um, maybe it'll stay long enough for Wes to hit them once or twice. Dawn of Hope from the opponent. Very cool. Let's go for a Thalid hit first. Moment of Craving, no problem. Now they will be able to uh, start doing the Dawn of Hope, gain some life, draw card stuff. We're gonna go Divine Visitation though, since they, uh, they did tap out. We're showing them what, what we're what we're about here. Three cards in hand for the opponent. Lots of mana available to them. Let's get in for one here. All we're doing is making sure they tap out for Dawn of Hope, and uh, they are. So they're going to trade here, gain one life, and draw some cards maybe with Dawn of Hope. You tap it out. You are very nice. Let's go for a Danto Vanguard into a Conclave Tribunal for that Dawn of Hope there. Just kind of slowing them down just a little bit. Could have gone with two Danto Vanguards there, but wanted to keep it a little light on the battlefield. Just in case of a uh, Settle the Wreckage. Four cards in hand for the opponent here. Let's go Hunted Witness and uh, crack in for three if we can. Went Hunted Witness prior to combat to, make, to say they may have something. Ooh, Chromium. Very nice. Let's go for a block attack here. They're going to go block. We're going to pay for life. Make it indestructible. And then we're going to go for a Conclave Tribunal here. Playing a Vanguard first, then Tribunal, since they're tapped out. And the thing here is they discard a card to make it hexproof, and then because the damage is on the stack, it actually kills itself. So, uh, opponent, big misplay there. I was hoping they would either go into it where, they, where you could just go for Conclave Tribunal, grab it, but they actually went the best option and decided to try and make it hexproof, but uh, yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> History Banalia here hitting. Very nice. Let's get in for some damage here. Uh, getting in for 7, down to 16. And of course, since we have the Divine Visitation, we have a 4-4 Angel instead of a 2-2 Knight. So, lots of damage on the battlefield here. Search for Ascansa from the opponent here. Making another 4-4 four, four Angel. Going Wand here and getting in for uh, lots of damage. Let's see if we get around to settle the wreckage. Brass is Contempt on the Angel. We can't do Transmogrifying Wand at instant speed. I keep reading it, being like, ah, oh, you can't do that. We're definitely going to go for uh, 6 points of damage. I'll drop them down to 12. Good thing about the Wand hitting the Witness there, but... Decided against that for a moment. Two cards in the opponent's hand here. And they're flipping Ascanta, so they will be able to dig for answers. They do pass turn here. We're going to go for uh, the Chapter 3 on Hishbanaya and then try and get in for some damage again. Holding up Hunted Witness. Another Vras's Contempt on the Adanto Vanguard and a cast down on our other 4 4. Getting in for just three. We're going to go Wand here and make two 4 4s. And then pass turn here. Two cards in hand, put it passing, turn back. Getting into land here is not amazing. Uh, we're going to, uh, let's see, just attack for the, the angels here, just to see if we get around to settle the wreckage. Another cast down for the angel. Hitting in for four, though, down to seven. Going to make Adanto Vanguard indestructible 
and make a 4-4 Angel because we can definitely do that. Very good. We'll be able to do that one more time next turn if we can. And passing turn. I think opponent maybe was dumbfounded by that logic there. <laughs> Looks like a Chemistry's Insight on their instep, though. Or on our instep. Three cards in hand. Let's see. Another Chemistry's Insight. They'll have enough mana here, but they don't have enough white mana. No, they're scooping it up. So no settle from them on that play. I'm going to bring in the Duress here. Take out one Divine Visitation, one Transmogrifying Wand. Um, might be worth it to bring in... Actually, two Divine Visitation and just hit Submit here. Visitation is a card that they will likely want to counter from now on for the rest of the match, so we want to make sure that our deck is a little bit faster than them, and Visitation is just a little bit too slow, but having an amazing hand like this is pretty much worth it. Uh, tap Blade from the opponent. We're going to go with a Duress directly and see what they have here. Kimster's inside, two Cast Downs. Let's get rid of a, 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 a Cast Down here. And go for an Isolated Chapel. They go with another Isolated Chapel in their turn. We're going to go with Vampire Pass. Going to go with another Isolated Chapel. Actually, going to go for a uh, Bishop Benali there and get in for one. So, lots of stuff going on this turn. Fourth land from the opponent here. Going to go for a land and I'm trying to see if they're going to go for a cast down this turn on one of these knights. They probably will do that next turn. Let's go for a Doom to Center and a Hunted Witness. Making sure that if they do go for turn five, Cleansing Nova that uh, we'll have a board state. Minister's inside from the opponent here. Main phase two going Thief of Sanity into Thought Erasure, getting rid of our Conclave Tribunal. Nice play by the opponent there. However, we have chapter three for Benalia, and we're just going to crash in because we have large creatures and, of course, creatures that survive uh, by making tokens of themselves. We're down to six here. Will we be able to close the match after this hit? Keep in mind, they do still have cast down in their hand, and they're going to go uh, Eve of Sanity there. They're going to play out a Doom Dissenter of their own, which is, I assume, ours. Yep. And let's just make a 1 1 lifelinker here. Legion's landing off the top for us. Very nice. Let's make another 1 1, thanks to this Adanto Vanguard. Or not Adanto Vanguard, Adanto Fort. Attacking in, uh, they're getting rid of a Fort, or a uh, Knight there, blocking another Knight. And taking three, going to three. We've got a wide enough board state, so if they have settle, they may be able to survive the turn. I think opponent's probably trying to dig for our settle. I don't believe we boarded that in. Haunted Witness is the card they picked there. And Thought Eraser. We just have a land. Hmm, I think opponent might actually scoop it up. There it is! Nice. Let's get into match three here and see what we can do. Loving this deck list. It's really one of the few deck lists where it's like, it's very versatile against control and also pretty good against aggro and like mid range and just has a lot of good stuff overall. Really enjoying this deck list. Sacred Foundry tapped coming in. This is like a Boros deck for me. Let's go for a Adanto Vanguard pass. Vanguard is great here, but Lava Coil is one of the few cards that can deal with it. Ooh, Jeskai. This looks like the Jeskai control list. Sprite Devil. Or Night Vale Sprite, not Sprite Devil. Let's go Hitcher Penalia and just get in for three here. Oh, it's not going to block. Down to 17, they go. We have another Hirsty Benalia in our hand, so if they tap out, we're just going to go for that again. Two Benalias is pretty painful for the opponent here. Sacred Foundry coming in tapped here. No problem. And they're attacking in for one. Okay. Getting rid of expansion into explosion. And passing turn. Let's go for a Isolated Chapel here. Go to combat, get in for five. Down to 12. Let's try for Benalia. Does it hit? It does hit, nice. All right, now we just gotta work our way around a Cleansing Nova on five mana. We'll be able to get that next turn. The chapter three for History of Benalia is gonna be pretty painful next turn. Ooh, Deafening Clarion. Ouchies. Gonna make a Danto Vanguard survive that. We do make another token, which is nice. Uh, getting in for three here. Definitely clear on one of the best removal spells in the format, and let's just get out some more creatures. Try and bounce back from that attack there. Opponent's scooping it up. They see the two vanguards, and they're like, we've seen enough. Let's take out the uh, Transmogrifying Wands and bring in the Duress. And uh, probably going to do it here. Again, a lot of control decks when I was testing this deck list. But that's fine. Bring on the control. I, I, I like uh, demolishing control where, when and where I can. <laughs> Yeah, definitely Clarion, one of the best removal spells for Jeskai Control, as well as just Boros in general. Um, also a great card if opponent wants to gain life after the fact, because it can do life and do three damage. So if you have Vanguards on the battlefield with your Boros deck, you can have them survive the, the match, and you only really lose two life. 
um, by making like two vanguards indestructible. Tap Lancer for Steam Vents, gonna go for Hunted Witness Pass. Seven cards in hand for the opponent, going for a mountain here. Passing back. Uh, gonna go Isolated Chapel and then just get him for one. Turn three, Benalia is great. And let's try and get out our Hunted Witnesses here. Keep in mind, Hunted Witnesses are great because it's going to discourage them from going for uh, a Deafening Clarion because our creatures still survive and they actually turn into Life Linkers as well. Seeing a Clifftop Retreat. Let's get in for three first and then try for a History Benalia if we can, maybe. Let's see. Might get countered here. Yep, there's a negate. Six cards in hand for the opponent. Another Steam Vents coming in untapped. So that's either one of two things. That's either a removal spell here or a Chemist's Insight on their instep. Or on our instep. Getting for three, dropping them down to 11. Passing turn, nothing. Wow, interesting. They didn't go for anything there. So they just took the damage. They took the damage again. What are they going for? Okay, Lyra Dawnbringer. Very nice. Getting into Lance here is not great, so we're just going to hold a uh, hold turn for now. Another Sacred Foundry coming in tap. Four cards in their hand. They're passing turn, though. They're not attacking in. Death Bloom Thalad is not amazing here. We really want a Conclave Tribunal. We really want a uh, Vrasis Contempt, something like that. Essence Scatter from the opponent. Let's pass turn here. We are tapped out for a Settled Record, so it could give them, you know, the uh, authority to attack in this turn. Keep in mind, the Dawn, uh, Dawnbringer gives them 5 life, so they're back up to 14. We're down to 15. Really need a removal spell. Let's go Duress here on the opponent. We've got Lava Coil and Disdainful Stroke. Let's get rid of uh, Disdainful Stroke. Not really afraid of Lava Coil right now. They also have another Lyra Dawnbringer in their hand, so not sure if we'll be able to survive this outcome. This is the point of the match where I wish I had some Ixalan's Bindings in my deck list, but I do not. Down to 10 here. Adanto Vanguard off the top. Can we just value attack in more points than them? Is that how we can do this? Keep in mind, Lyra Dawnbringer is a legendary, so they can't play multiples. Field of Ruin for them. Going to go for a Black Mana for us. Three cards in hand here for the opponent. I feel like they just continue to attack in here, even though we're at 10 life. They are at 13. We will be able to do six points of damage next turn, drop them down to 12. So they are hitting us in for five. Do we have anything off the top? If we have removal, we might be able to survive this, but luck likely not. Kimster's Insight from the opponent, going for a Glacial Fortress. Ooh, landing is not exactly what we want here. They have Ion Eyes dropping us down to three. That's gonna do it. Let's get into the sideboard here and see what we can do in game three. Taking out, Vras's, uh, taking out Divine Visitation, bringing in Vras's Contempt. We could probably bring in Settle the Wreckage over Divine Visitation as well. That could also be a pretty good way to do it, but we're just gonna submit here and then get into game three. Three lands with a duress and opening hand. That's a keeper for me. Planet Mulligan is six there. I'm gonna go duress. And uh ooh, two Teferis and a Deafening Clarion. Let's get rid of a Teferi there. Both of those are bad news. Land from the opponent, that's off the top for them. Let's go for Isolated Chapel and get in for a Danto Vanguard and pass the turn. This does mean we have History Benalia on turn three, which is very good. And they just played Steam Vents. Or not Steam Vents, a uh, Sulphur Falls. Let's go for a Plains here, getting in for a History Benalia. Free combat, and then get in for three. Keep in mind, they do have Deafening Clarion, so they need that white mana from that Glacial Fortress in their hand. They do get it. They might use it next turn, thanks to the uh, second knight coming into the battlefield. But this is kind of ending up like the last game where we have two vanguards on the battlefield with uh, the Doom to center as well. Let's get in for five. They also have Lyra Dawnbringer in their hand as well, so they need to get to that five mana as quickly as possible. Justice Strike, we're gonna pay four on that, make it indestructible. They could have done that to the Knight there, but they really wanted us to pay for that life there. Gonna go Doom to Center and Vanguard. Now let's see a Deafening Clarion. Four cards in hand. Definitely go to, gonna go for it, there it is. Gonna make both of our Vanguards here indestructible so they actually survive the turn we do go down to eight but that doesn't really matter that much to us we want to make sure that they don't get in for much value next turn getting in for uh six seven eight down to four playing out the thalid so they need a white mana basically for that Dawnbringer. do they hit it four cards in hand here the fairy hero of dominary is also in their hand they could play that they hit sacred foundry they go down to two so they do do they play the Dawnbringer? they do Nice. Very good for the, the opponent there. Let's just attack in here because even with the life gain, we still actually win the match here. So opponents doing the math, but I feel like we probably win here. 
They gained five, go to seven. We have, uh, let's see, three, six, nine, uh, 11 there. And that was it. Very good. Let's get into match four here and see what we can do. Again, Lyra Dawnbringer, one of the most annoying creatures in the uh, standard set right now, standard format. But, you know, you can definitely get around it if you're just fast enough. Going for Allegiance Landing on turn one. Another Thought Erasure. What is up with these Demir matchups? For whatever reason, people are really trying to, to dig in on control right now. And uh, it's fine. It's fine. We can definitely get around it. <laughs> Let's get in for one here. Go up to 21. They go down to 19. Enter Land Harbor for the opponent. We're going to go for a, just a swing out here. Really need black mana, like right now, if we can get it. That would be the best. Cast down. We see green mana in their deck as well, so this is Sultai control, looks like. Or maybe Sultai midrange. Got a Thalad there. Really need that black mana soon. Can we bounce back from this match? Let's get in for one here, drop them down to 16 if we can. Down to 16. Chemistry's insight from the opponent there. Going to five. What a cemetery. There we go. There's a, some black mana. Let's get in for one point of damage and probably play out a Thalad this turn. Man. Do we see a control card? We do. As, uh, Essence Scatter. Five cards in hand for the opponent here. Five mana on the battlefield. Hitting their sixth with the Overgrown Tomb, but it's coming in tapped. Legion's Landing and Thalad here. Let's go for an attack first. Go to 14. And then let's go for a Doom to Center. That's going to get countered, no problem. And let's go for a Legion's Landing again. Make a 1 1 Lifelinker. We're trying to work around those counters. Thought Erasure from the opponent. I assume they want to get rid of the uh, Thalad there. They could get rid of the Conclave Tribunal. Yep, there's the Thalad. There it goes. We'd really love a Black Man about now for that Conclave Tribunal. Let's get in for two here. Drop them down to 12. Slowly but surely, our deck list is. Uh, kind of doing stuff. Chemistry's insight from the opponent there, going up to four cards in hand after the draw. Search for Ascanta. Looks like they're just going to pass turn, though. Transmogrifying Wand is interesting. We'd really love one more mana for that Divine Visitation if we can get it. Down to 12 here. We're slowly but surely pinging away at them. Trying to go for the Wand here. We see three cards in hand, so they may have another counter. Another Negate or maybe a Sinister Sabotage. There's a Sabotage. All the value. <laughs> <laughs> Search for Ascanta looking at the top card. They could pitch it. They're going to get it into the hand. And then also, of course, flip Ascanta. Passing turn. Three cards in hand. We're uh, continuing to crash in for two points of damage. Grass's Contempt. Very nice. They're tapping out for that. So we're going to go History Benalia and see if we, they have a, a counter in hand. Sinister Sabotage again. Opponent is loaded with counters. They have one card in hand. Now two passing back to us. We have a Plains here. Let's go for that and hit in for one if we can. Back down to 10, if we can get it. Chemistry's Insight, drawing them some cards. Down to 11, up to 26 for us. Let's go for Divine Visitation if we can. Now they just drew some cards, but they actually let the Visitation hit, which is nice. Passing turn back to the opponent here. Four cards in total. Three cards after they laying a land. Really kind of waiting on like a, oh, there it is. Eldest Reborn there, okay. Adanto Vanguard and Tribunal. Let's go for a Vanguard into a Tribunal here. Since the uh, Vanguard can't attack. I'm going to grab that Eldest Reborn there. Just to slow them down a little bit. Just kind of waiting for the opponent to play it like a Doom Whisper or something. Uh, we do, definitely need, do need Black Mana for that, though. Let's see what they're tapping out for. Carnage Tyrant. Ooh. This match might be over because of that. A game one Carnage Tyrant is really hard to deal with with this deck list. We don't have to sell the wreckage in our game one opening play. Grass is content from the opponent. This looks like it might just be game for us. Yeah, sell the wreckage is definitely something we want to bring in in a game two. Wish we had it in the main board. Always. <laughs> one of the few cards where it's like, if you don't have this particular card in the deck list, you just kind of lose. Unless you have a ton of uh, blocking power. Getting in for seven, dropping us down to 19 here. A white mana in hand. Not going to do it here. Ascanta. Hunt for Assassin's Trophy. And they could get rid of either Visitation Landing or Tribunal, I guess. Tribunal is the card they're going to go for. Let's go for a Swamp. And we're actually going to Vrasis Contempt our own Vanguard to gain some life. Because we have to sacrifice it anyway. And we can't target Carnage Tyrant. Discarding a Plains here. 
Japan gonna go for Nebraska? Yeah, this match is probably over here. I think it's gonna get it out. Even though we're at 21 life, we're such a, at a back foot now. Yeah, we're gonna go with a scoop here and go to game two. Let's bring in duresses. Uh, we definitely wanna bring in Saddle the Wreckage. Taking out Transmogrifying Wand. And uh, let's see, bring in Saddle the Wreckage. We take out some Divine Visitations. Nope, bringing in, or taking out all the Contempts now. I definitely think that, that might've been a mistake. Let's see. I wanna just take out the Visitations and bring in Contempts. No, we're just gonna do the, go the Divines, okay. Seeing that Vraska there kind of made me pause a little bit, but and our deck list is pretty fast, so we should be able to get around that if we can. Keep in mind that particular Vraska is very slow, so it's one of those cards where if you're behind the match, you're probably going to lose anyway once they play that. But if you're ahead of the match and they play that, you're probably still going to win. So it's just a slower kind of play for the opponent. Going to go for a Thalid here if we can. It does hit. Very nice. So we do have two Swamp here. Definitely a good hand for us. Body Erasure from the opponent, getting rid of that Doom to center. Glad we played the Thalid first. Four cards in hand for the opponent. Going for a Conclave Tribunal off the top and getting in for six. Down to 11. Are we fast enough? Can we do enough damage? Tap land from the opponent here. Uh, nice. Duress going to go for that. Let's see what they have in hand. Going to go for a Moment of Craving on the Thalid. Two Contempts and a uh, Cast Down. Going to get rid of the Contempts there. And in for three. They need... Uh, actually, they have enough mana here for a Contempt for the uh, Vanguard. So we're just going to continue to hit in for four here. Seeing a Contempt hit the Vanguard. Getting in for one. Let's go for Dissenter here and pass turn. Three cards in hand for the opponent. Being a land. One of the cards in their hand is a cast down, so keep that in mind. Vanguard off the top is not bad. Let's get in for two here. I'm gonna go cast down on a fungus. And uh play a Vanguard. So now we know nothing in their hand. They're down to one card in hand, though. They keep playing out their lands. This is kind of the point of the match where they probably shouldn't be playing out their lands because they have enough lands, but you know. Price of Fame going on that Vanguard. We're going to pay the life there and make it indestructible. Down to six for the opponent. Getting a Hunted Witness here. Now, if they try to board wipe us for Witch Will of Soot or something, we actually bounce back pretty hard. Assassin's Trophy, going to pay for life again. And opponent scooping it up. There we go. Let's get into game three here. Do we want to bring anything in? I think we're just gonna hit submit here. Yeah, let's hit submit. All right, let's go for let's see three cards in hand, three land in hand. Would really love one more white mana for that history banalia back to back play. That's a really back breaking ha uh, hand right there. We're gonna go for a forest in the opponent's turn. We're gonna go for isolated chapel pass. Overgrown tomb from the opponent pass. Let's go for vanguard. Really wish Vanguard had haste. That'd be like the cherry on the top of that amazing card. Thought Erasure from the opponent. Probably gonna get rid of a History Banalia. Yep, there it goes. Three cards in hand for the opponent here. Thalad off the top there. They've got three Thalads. <laughs> Let's go for a Thalad on main phase two here. Dropping down to 17 after that attack. And uh, four cards in hand. Let's see, dropping another land here. Maybe Chemistry's Insight on our instep. Legion's Landing off the top there is pretty good. Let's go for a attack here. Cast down, hitting the Fungus there. Let's go for Legion's Landing. Could have played another Thalid there, but wanted to get around an, AS, an Essence Scatter. All right, we had a, our fourth land here. Let's get in for some damage. Brass is Contempt on the... Uh, Vanguard there. Interesting they didn't do that pre-combat because we wouldn't be able to flip the uh, Adanto the first fort. Two cards in hand for the opponent. Eldest Reborn here. Let's just get rid of the uh, Sapperling. Alright, pass turn back to us. We've got Invoke the Divine in our hand as well, so we're going to get rid of the Eldest Reborn. Gain some life and then just get in for three. One card in our opponent's hand. I feel like they're kind of out of gas. Playing out Dissenter here. Let's see, two cards in hand. Opponent scooping it up! There we go. All right, last match of the video here. <clears throat> See what we can do. Three lands in hand, Legion, Thalids, and Transmogrifying Wand. Steam Vents, okay. This could be an Izzet's Drake deck. This could also be a Grixis Control deck. <clears throat> Excuse me. Isolate Chapel, head in for one. 
Passing back to the opponent here. Six cards in hand going for another Sulfur Falls pass. This is most likely a control deck now. Let's see. Prove me wrong. Nope, hit a Thalit. Very nice. Let's get in for uh, one if we can. And next turn going for a Thalit into Legion's Landing again is pretty good. Looks like Grixis. Ooh, Thief of Sanity from the opponent there. Transmogrifying Wand can definitely take care of that Thief of Sanity. Now, it does slow us down as far as attacking him because it is a 2-4. Um, but it does, you know, get rid of the Thief of Sanity, which is fun. <laughs> Four cards in hand for the opponent here. Car and Sign of Urza. Dismissal Pyromancer is the card we're going to give them. Don't want to give them the Hexproof Flyer. Hmm. Let's go History Benalia once again. 2-2. Two, two. And then let's go for a Legion's Landing here. Could have gone for Dissenter. Probably Dissenter was a better play. Uh, passing turn, most likely, here. Waiting for that turn three on Hitch Benalia so we can attack in. Do some real damage. Contempt or Plague Crafter? Let's give them Plague Crafter there. Those were two horrible choices for us. But if they play Plague Crafter, we're just going to go Thalid Sack and uh, get a 1 1 off that. Divine Visitation's very good here. Does it hit? It does not. Disdainful Stroke from the opponent there. Let's try and go for a Karn uh, kill here. Obviously, they're going to block some ways. Karn takes three. They don't destroy a knight, which is interesting. Is it worth it? We're going to go for it. Get rid of their uh, human there. Five cards in hand for the opponent. Seam Vents or Watery Grave. Eh, land is land to me. We have a uh, Thalad and Dissenter in our hand, so that's going to be a great turn play for us next turn. Another Thief of Sanity here. Let's see. Let's go for an attack here at Karn. We have two knights that are four threes, so pretty powerful here. We're going to block that way, but Karn's going to die, which means they either have a follow up Karn. But they didn't really care that much. Let's go for a Thalid here. And for a Vanguard. They do hit. And we're going to get rid of their Thief of Sanity. <laughs> Making some Oxes. Not really the way you want to use Transmogrifying Wand. Ooh, another Karn from the opponent. Ugh. Definitely had that. Hunted Witness and Doom to Center. No attacks. Just, actually, we're going to attack into Karn here because of our uh, wide board state. Let's see how they want to block here. Yeah, blocking the two knights. Going to make the vanguard indestructible. We're just hitting them down to 11. Would love to start getting into some Vrasa's Contempt for those oxes or for the Karn itself. That would be nice. for here. Brass is Contempt on the Thalid there. Land off the top. Let's just scoop here and go into uh, game two. Kind of had an awkward situation there. We, we created too many oxes for them. Let's get the wands out and bring in uh, more Contempt. They got a Visitation and a Hunted Witness. Not bad. I would like to be a little bit more aggressive with this uh, this next line of play. Opponent has a lot of really good value creatures, so bringing in those contempts is really going to help us with the uh, Thief of Sanities and stuff like that. And of course, Karn, dealing with be being able to hit Karn as well. Um, but yeah, it'll be fine. It's so strange, we've hit like three different versions of control decks in this uh, this video. Solitai Control, Jeskai Control. And of course, Demir Control saw that as well. We're going to go with Keep here thanks to that turn one duress. Opening hand is at Angrath. Ooh, let's get rid of that. Show them what they have in their hand here. Tap land from the opponent. Let's go for Isolated Chapel Pass. Sabotage is a turn three play, so they're not going to have that just yet. So we're going to go History Benalia. Pass to the opponent here. Ground Catacombs is also the play. Their passing turn. Great, another 2-2. Two, two. 
Let's get in for two here. They do have enough for a contempt if they hit another land. Let's play out a Thalid if we can. We see that hitting. Nice. So Sabotage does not target that. So we're kind of expecting a Ritual of Soot, maybe. There it is. Land at the top is not good. Let's go for a Memorial to Glory and just get in for one here. Card in hand for the opponent. Steam Vents hitting. Coming in untapped. Body Erasure. We got nothing but land, baby. Let's go for a Plains here and then uh, actually go for Swamp and then go for a Danto Vanguard. It's going to get probably sab sabotaged. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. Three cards in the opponent's hand here. A Contempt, Stainful Stroke, and something else. Stepping out for a Pyromancer. Doom to Center is not bad. Let's go for that. And we'll probably go for Memorial to Glory Sack next turn. Four cards in the opponent's hand. Passing. Let's go for the Memorial to Glory. I think it's in one wins. Legion's Landing does mean we will be able to get that flipped if they don't have a counter. They don't have a counter, so we're going to get in for an attack here. Get that Legion's Landing flip. This is really good in the control matchup because they can't really deal with it unless they get into a Field of Ruin. They're blocking the Dissenter here, and they're taking three. I feel like that might have been a mistake thanks to the 2-2, but if they have another Ritual of Soot, then it's probably fine. The tap looks like they're going to draw a card and discard a card. Hmm... Discarding Ritual of Soot there, it looked like. Is that a mistake? From the opponent. He's discarding Thought Erasure there. Another card. No, another Ritual of Soot from the opponent. Very nice. Let's go with a, uh, a Danto and make a 1 1. Lay a land and just get in for 1. Keep in mind, those Ritual of Soots are fine, but uh, we're going to have uh, Vanguards, or a Danto, the first fort, popping out tokens every single turn. Looks like they laid a land and they're passing here. Let's make another 1 1. Banalia off the top is very good. Does it hit? Got to rebuild our board state here. It does not hit thanks to Sabotage, but we still get in for two here. And they're getting closer and closer to death. They've already used three Witchful of Soots. One is discarded, the other two were used. So only one more in their deck. Let's see a Contempt hitting a Vampire very soon. Let's go for another Vampire and pass. The rest from the opponent here. Probably seeing a Contempt hitting a Vampire this moment. Let's see. Definitely happening. Yep, going to 10 here. Cards in hand. Disdainful Stroke and Spell Pierce. Let's get rid of Disdainful Stroke and get in for two. Spell Pierce is not as a big a threat against a, a uh, Banalia or something like that. Disdainful Stroke is pretty bad against a Divine Visitation. Going for another Vampire. Playing out a Swamp. All I'm doing with the uh, the land plays probably should be able to keep lands into my hand from now on, but making sure that uh, they can't go thought erasure on whatever we have. Opponent scooping it up though, very nice. All right, let's get into uh, the game here. I think we're probably fine, so let's get into game three. Would like to see some more contempts, but we'll see. Again, the Dissenter, Thalad, and the Hunted Witness are just very good at being able to survive that uh, Ritual of Soot play from the opponent. History Benalia, not so much, obviously, but it's there for the Divine Visitation and just really good value. Let's see what her hand looks like here. Three lands with a Duress, Hunted Witness, and a Thalad. I'm going to keep that. Opponent is on the play, though. Sulphur Falls coming in tap. We're going to go maybe for a Swamp and just go for Duress. They have a Selective Snare. Interesting. Only a uh, non-land, non-creature card in their hand. Sulphur Falls again. Let's go for a Doom to Center. Pass turn. Land for the play there. We can go for a Plains. Let's get in for one if we can. Now keep in mind the Hunted Witnesses coming in here. Uh, again, they're kind of going to just be really good because if they go like Ritual of Soot here, we just have one ones that have Life Link and a 2 2. So, it's a really good value for us. Five cards in hand for the opponent. I'm going to go for a draw spell here. They do not. Six cards in hand for the opponent. Five cards dropping down on the land. 
Doomed Whisper. Ooh. Glad we have Brass's Contempt. Surveilling for two here, dropping down to 14. Good value. Surveilling again, dropping down to 12. I think we have a Steam Vent. Let's go for an attack here. Get in for three. Most of the time, a Doom Whisperer will just, like, surveil into another Doom Whisperer. So we might see another one here. Four cards in hand. Tap it out for another Doom Whisperer. Called that. Let's just attack in here because we don't care. Because all, all of our creatures become tokens again. They're blocking the three. They're taking three. We're down to six. Three cards in the opponent's hand here. We're at 22. What can they do? We can still do another three points of damage next turn. Unless they have Ritual of Soot. In which case we can only do two. Ooh, Banefire on that Dissenter there. Making a 2-2. Two -two. Hunted Witness off the top for us. Let's just get in for th uh, four. Then I block the 2-2. Two -two, and then we'll, they'll take three. But down to three. And then we'll just play Hunted Witness. Unless they have a counter. They do not. We should have the game now. If they don't have a Ritual of Soot. They don't! Nice! All right, guys, you saw the matches. You saw how this deck does apparently really well against removal and control heavy matchups. Really like it for that. Uh, just a really kind of fast deck, surprisingly, thanks to History Banalia. Uh, but that's going to do it for the video, guys. Like it if you like it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And comment down below a deck that you want me to cover in the next videos. We love that for sure. And uh, yeah, thanks so much, guys. I love you, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel for more awesome MTG content just like this. And make sure to tap the bell icon to be notified whenever a video is made live. If you want to keep watching content, here are two more videos for you. This video and many others are sponsored by MTGO Traders and Cape Fear Games. Buy and sell digital singles to build your online collection today with MTGO Traders, and get your paper singles, accessories, and much more from Cape Fear Games. Whatever your magic needs, both places have you covered.